the Muirhead Red Squirrel Sanctuary offers is indeed a place of sanctuary. Jimmy and Rosie have four acres of well over a hundred acres of woodland that's uh, managed by the Woodland Trust and their personal four acres uh, has been um, there's been a sort of local agreement where people won't wander about in here and it means that the squirrels have a place to come and feed and have a quiet space really that uh, gives them a bit of peace and quiet from being out in the wider wood where there are maybe dog walkers and things like that going on, people in bikes. And it really works very well for the, the general squirrel population in the wood because there's a lot of squirrels come to this particular part of it but then of course they'll go away and disperse out into the wider woodland. So it's a, it's a safe haven and it's a good regular source of uh, food when times get hard. There are feeders in place among the trees that the squirrels can come to. Those feeders were made by Dundee College and seem to be quite effective at uh, letting the reds in and out to get some food and even some shelter while they're at it and um, there's also food in the garden itself that the squirrels will come to. So there's always on food on source for them, which is, which is a really good and useful thing because there are certain times of year where the rest of the wood might not be um, so bountiful. But not only are there squirrels in the wood, it's also offered a place of sanctuary for a whole range of creatures. There are hedgehogs here, there are foxes that come in night time, there is a small family of deer that uh, use the place as a quiet haven. Owls come here as well and uh, occasionally there's a jay that makes its presence known very noisily about the place. So in building a, a red squirrel sanctuary actually what's been created is, is a safe haven for a whole range of wildlife. The squirrels are actually having a offspring in the woods itself and they've been seen in the garden uh, fairly regularly, very little ones. Squirrels mate, uh, sometimes adult females will mate twice a year. Uh, first mating tends to be from about the end of December through until maybe about the end of January and the female goes into oestrus for one day which makes her quite popular with all the males in the neighbourhood and some spectacular mating chases follow until she gets caught. They are what's called polyandrous so she might get caught a couple of times and that would mean that the offspring that she has could be half siblings, which is very good for the gene pool. Squirrels tend to um, be busy pretty much all the year round, in fact. There, there was a, a notion that squirrels hibernated, and when I started doing my job, in fact, someone actually seriously asked me what I was going to be doing in the winter time when there weren't any squirrels to count. So I had to put them right. Uh, once the springtime comes along, squirrels are much more active, and as the daylight hours, um, spread out and we get into summertime then squirrels are out twice a day what tends to happen is that with the daylight coming along squirrels are up and active and out running around looking for food and then towards the middle of the day things tend to quieten down in woodlands and, and it's not the best time to look for them and then later on in the day you get a bit more activity and they're out looking for something to fill them up before they go to sleep for the night and that tends to be the pattern so if you're looking for squirrels um, the best time is for me to is really in the first time in the morning. Since about 2005, there's a disease called squirrel pox, which is a viral disease that affects red squirrels. Though the grey squirrels are the carriers, and the grey squirrels aren't affected by it, but because red squirrels have never faced it before, the effects of it are almost inevitably fatal. And this is a skin disease that spreads over their faces and their necks and down into their armpits and down below and eventually this skin disease causes terrible sores and pussy little um, wounds in their face and eventually they can't eat and they can't drink. So it's a horrible disease that takes up to two weeks for them to die of thirst and hunger. We've now had outbreaks among red squirrels in Scotland. There's an enormous amount of work being done to contain it where they were, which is at the moment down in the borders. There are no signs of pox having reached anywhere north of the central belt at the moment, though there are plans in place that should it do so. So we have to be very alert to that as well, because if squirrel pox crossed through the central belt and got into the squirrels north of that area, then we would have a tremendous fight in our hands to try and actually hang on to the red squirrels that we have. A key part that the general public can play in supporting Saving Scotland Red Squirrels is by letting us know where the squirrels are 
uh, as I mentioned, there are, there are five project offices covering very, very large areas and we can't be everywhere. So what we need are the public to be our eyes and ears. And when they see squirrels, what's vital to us is that they let us know by visiting our website, which is Saving Scotland's Red Squirrels. And there are links there where they can report the sightings and those sightings are then recorded on a national database. And it lets us build up a picture of the places where maybe we need to go and work because there are grey squirrels turning up or places that we didn't know there were red squirrels which are always a pleasant surprise. So the public are uh, very much allies that we need to keep uh, with us in the project. Thank you.